Shalom Aleichem to all. Today I want to share a thought that I have that I think is going to save a lot of marriages. It's going to save a lot of chinuch issues. It's going to save the next generation. I think that one of the greatest issues today's day is perfectionism. What do I mean by that? What I'm claiming is that all of us are perfectionists in different places. And this is destroying us, it's limiting us, it's making us stuck, and we cannot get out of it. Let me explain. Perfectionism means that you think that something needs to be perfect. This belongs to be this way. If your spouse or someone near you does it the other way, you get upset. Or you would never ask for help. Many women would never ask, they want their husbands to help them. They don't ask for help because they, they have a certain way of doing it. They know if their husband is going to go shopping for them, he's not going to buy the right things, he's going to spend too much money, too little money, he's not going to buy the right nash. But everything has to be perfect and if he's not doing it perfect, then it's hard for her to ask him to do it. But then she's upset why he doesn't help her. She never, she's always scared to ask him for help because whenever he does help her, it's not the way exactly the way she wants it to be. And obviously this is vice versa. Husbands asking women the same thing, wives the same thing. And this is something that is across the board. But I want to backtrack for a moment. Where did this all begin? And why in this generation do we suffer from it so much? Today we are living in a world of a modic abundance. We have everything. We have so much. People buy a new phone, a new car. They want it to have every feature. So how does they feature? This is missing, that's missing. This is a better one. Constant the conversation in the, in the Western culture today's day, everything, the conversation is, what's well, better? This computer is better, that computer is better, this phone, that phone, this design glasses, this shirt. It's, and if it's not perfect, I bought a new phone, it's great. I could buy a new phone for $500, and you could buy a phone from Samsung or from Apple for a thousand, for $1,500. You know what the difference is? A little perfectionism. If you're a photographer and you need your, the best camera, yes, you should buy one of the two, a Galaxy or Apple. But if you're not a photographer, you don't need the best camera. You don't need to have the best restaurant. You don't need to have the best food. I'm not even going to the conversation of being spoiled, but I think there's something else. All of this created a generation of perfectionists. We are all perfectionists in different places. Some of us are perfectionist in Ashkofer. It's only my way of thinking. And I worked out what I think is considered Olam Haba, what is a mitzvah, what is an avayda, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. My way of doing shadikha for my children is the way I figured it out. And if you are doing it, it's not going to be perfect. So I can't trust you. I can't move on. Perfectionism breeds a lot of inner pain and inner anger, inner worry, inner fear. We don't even know we are perfectionists. Some people are the greatest slobs in their house. Their house is flying because that's not the place where they're a perfectionist at. But this same person can be a perfectionist somewhere else. So I believe that the situation in the world, the abundance, the extra and this whole American culture, Western culture that came into us, created us to be that we need to have everything the best. You even need to have the best Rebbe. My Rebbe, ah, it's the greatest, it's the great. Your Rebbe, ah. I need the best that ever. You can't go to a tzaddik. It has to be the greatest tzaddik in the world. You can't have, you, you know, if, if, if you don't, if you are, some people are perfectionists or rachnias. They believe that learning is, if you learn gishmak for two hours gemara, you learn only one hour, so you're not going to learn at all. Davening with many, it's only three hours. If you daven a half an hour with many, rather daven a home I'm not even talking about black or white thinking, all or nothing. I think a lot of black or white thinking, a lot of all or nothing thinking, is an, is an outcome from a certain perfectionism that's in our brain. How about we raise our kids and we tell ourselves, I'm not perfect, I'm not looking to be perfect. I strive to be perfect, I know what perfect is, but I'm not looking to be, one, to be there because I don't think I'll get there. But it's good to know where perfect is, but I don't need to be there. Hashem is very happy with me. Hashem is not a perfectionist from our perspective. Hashem wants us to grow better and better and better, not to, not to just be. It takes 90 years for a person to go through this lifetime to, to become better and better. And nobody dies perfect. There's no tzaddik, there's no one that could claim to be a tzaddik that 
that never did an Avaidah. Why? Because Hashem knows there's no perfectionism. Perfectionism is against the Torah. People want to get married and do the Aluchas and all those in Yunam. Everything with perfection. Maybe you're hurting your partner. Maybe it's a perfectionist issue. You decided that this is Yiddishkeit. You decided this is normal. It's normal? It's not normal. People always ask. What's normal? How do you think we should do it? What do you mean what's normal? Use your cycle or whatever you think or just ask a, you know, a, a mimcha, a professional in that field. And whatever makes sense to you, you do. And you should know you're not going to be perfect. And don't tell your kids you're perfect. Tell them you're trying. So they're not going to want to be perfect. How many children get a feeling from us when we're kids that we need to make a hundred on the test? And if I, I don't strive to be perfect, I'll never make it, so forget about it, the whole thing. Why can't we tell our child, I'll be so proud of you if you make a 60 on the test, and then a 70, and then an 80. 80 is perfect. I always say, 80 is perfect. 100 is OCD perfection. Nervousness. It, 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 it destroys people's lives. I'm going to tell you that I know. I deal with Shalom Ba'as a lot. I'm going to tell you one of the greatest, one of the greatest issues in marriages is perfectionism. And Hasidus, wherever there's a club, a, a crew, a chabira, perfectionism is in the way. The Rav decided that his killer has to look exactly this way. It's not flexible at the borders. It has to be. It's called for perfectionism. Who decided this Hasidus has to be perfect? Who decided this Kehillah has to be perfect? We could have all kinds of Yidin. All kinds of people in our Chabira. And what's amazing is, if you look at the Mishnayas, the first Pairik in Mesechtas Bruchas, Rebbe Gamliel, I think it is, says, the Halucha, that you're not allowed to take a shower, you're not allowed to, one is not allowed to shower themselves in the week of Shiva. If Chaz Shum someone lost a loved one, for that week he shouldn't take Shiva. One of his people died, he took a shower. He's told me the Master Berebbe. How dare you just told us not to? He says, Istanasani. I'm a perfectionist. I can't. Why did the Mishnah have to write this? Why did the Mishnah have to tell this? The Mishnah's teaching, there's three things that the Mishnah talks us, tells us about that the Gamliel that he taught us, and he did different. He says you don't sit Shiva on, on a Knecht, on Evid. So why does the Mishnah have to tell us? Because the Mishnah is telling us to start, the Mishnah is before Gamur, the Mishnah starts and teaches us something. That there's Aluchas. But there's always a yoytzim and a klal. Of course, you have to know when. You have to ask a roof, someone, or, or you should know yourself how to learn and know the source to know when you can be flexible and not to be flexible. But the Mishnah teaches us there is no such thing as a stagnant, stiff, hard, boxed, uh, uh, rough-edged halacha. It doesn't exist. It's flexible. What is the rechei of the Torah? The ways of the Torah is dark and noyam, is is but soft. And Gishmak, what does that mean? That means that it's flexible to a certain sense that we understand there's no such thing as perfectionism. Perfectionism is one of the greatest causes of issues today. Why can't we live with people that believe different than us? That see a way to Hashem different than us. We, 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 get, we go shopping. Everybody shops different. There's no such thing as better and worse. Who are you to decide? It comes from perfectionism. And I think the cure is, start with your children and then with yourself, both. Yourself and your children. Dafke, do not buy the best car. You don't have to lease the best car. Lease the second to the best car. Maybe that's why Hashem made this so complicated to get new cars these days. People are going to, you don't need to buy the best. The worst car today is better than the best car 20 years ago. So who says you need to have the best from this year? You can have the best from, from 10 years ago. You're not missing anything if, if your phone doesn't connect to Android uh, Auto or a Mac, you have to plug it in. I can't say people are buying a $50,000 purchase. They're buying a $50,000 car. And, and it doesn't have automatic, when you come in, your phone doesn't automatically connect to the car. You consider the whole car as a garbage. The car has a million amazing features. We became perfectionists. Buy a phone knowing that it's not the best phone. And if you could teach this to your children, I'm only saying this to teach, to change, and to hopefully help Eden for the next generation. Teach them a zisa kinder. Leben sei os. It does not have to be perfect. Not everything has to match every single time. Of course, we have to look like mentioned. And of course, we have to, don't buy a junky, broken phone. I'm not saying that. 
I'm saying buy a good phone, but you can buy a phone for $500 or $1,500. The only difference is a little perfection. You make that purchase, you sit down with your kids, you see, I was just about to spend so much more money and I didn't because I don't need to have the best. I'm still great. I'm awesome. I'm amazing. Even if I'm not the best. So what happens is I will have a better self-confidence even if I'm not perfect. So I think the greatest pandemic from our generation now is perfectionism. Look at yourself. You're going to find all those places where you don't trust someone else or you just can't connect or or, or engage in other people and even do business. How many people, they don't want to start a business until everything is organized. Yes, it's good to be organized. Don't just jump into a business deal. But you have to make cheshbonus. I think it was the owner of uh, LinkedIn. And he said that he, if someone, he created the LinkedIn as the Facebook for the business. And he, he created the website. And he said it wasn't perfect and he launched it. And then he perfected it more and more, became better. And he wrote a quote and he says, if you start a business when it's perfect, you started it too late. Don't be a perfectionist. Start. Start learning every day. Five minutes a day. Two seconds a day. Do one small thing. Who said you have to be perfect? Hashem doesn't need you to be perfect. It's perfectly perfect not to be perfect. People are looking for shidduchim. It has to be the perfect shidduch. They have a list. <laughs> I do a lot in the you know, dating coaching. And people have a list of this, this, this. You could check off. You went out with a girl or with a boy ten times. One thing on the list is missing. It's not for me. Really? Really? Hashem made marriage for two imperfect, imperfect people to become more perfect, to become better. Marriage is a mid workout machine. It's not where two perfect people come together. Marriages are two imperfect people come together. We have a lot of common ground that have common values and they decide to get married and then to work on each other and to grow together and to become better. Nobody's perfect. Don't look for the perfect boy. Don't look for the perfect girl. Look for someone that you can have some shaykhs with. You feel connected. There's something there between you. You have shared values, as I said. That's it. This is going to save your life. It's a day of the sickest today. And I put together the whole Chodesh, the Shashunah, and Kippur, say it's my Shiva and Sikkis. And we all want to end the Yom Sikkis with the Yom with the Simcha. And to go into the new year, Metah Simcha, Metah Freilichkeit. I think the greatest checklist you should do is sit down and say, what's really bothering? What, what's between me and my husband? What's between me and my wife? Is it my perfectionism? Does she have to cook everything so perfect? Does she have to make the laundry every single day exactly? She has to fold it away. If not, you feel, don't feel good. She doesn't change the diaper the second you want. You feel you have to change the diaper every hour. You're a perfectionist. Your wife wants to change the diaper every three hours, every two hours. Who decided? Of course, if the baby didn't make. Who decided this is all perfectionism and this is all standing in your way and I'm dealing with hundreds of Shalom bias, I'm telling you. I'm sure all my colleagues, people that do what I do, would agree with this message. That perfectionism is in the way of our Hatzlucha. It's in the way of our happiness. I get in talk.